Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago, I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of $1. And since then, I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. Now this video is about a few different things, but mainly about the work that's been done on the rudder, getting that a lot closer to completion. We're also going to be catching up with the open house event that we had last weekend and some of the work we did to prepare for that, including putting the skylight hatch onto the deck. Now the last time we saw the rudder, the hardware that attaches the rudder to the boat, the pintles and gudgeons, were all just dry fit, and so the rudder was hung on the stern of the boat so we could know the precise final locations of the pintles and drill the fastening holes while it was all in place. Then the rudder was taken back down off the boat and Zeal was able to finally bed and fasten the pintles in place for good using tar and bronze rivets. Yeah, so we uh, opted to rivet the pintles onto the rudder. Uh, we chose to do that to keep the profile flush for any fasteners on that surface. Uh, that way also it saves some time and you know we didn't have to do any threading or anything like that into the uh, tangs of the pintles themselves. So all we had to do was drill a hole all the way through it uh, make a head on one side of uh, a bronze rod and then we would just heat up the other side of that slug, drive it through, and then set the rudder on an anvil on that fastener and then upset the other side of it so that the only way to get it out theoretically is to drill the head of the rivet out. So it's a very very secure fastener that you know doesn't have any threads, you have full strength of the diameter of the rod, uh, and uh, it's all flush and pretty much the fastener disappears and you don't see it, but it's very traditional and very strong method for fastening. So once Zeal had finished the primary shaping of the rudder and he primed it and it was all looking great, his next job was to work on mounting the trim tab. Now you may remember the trim tab is a little bit like a rudder for the rudder. It's a small auxiliary foil shaped tab that is mounted on the trailing edge of the rudder and it is turned by a small control lever and a shaft and when it turns the water flowing past it actually forces the main rudder to turn the opposite direction and it's a way of controlling the steering of the boat with a smaller amount of power than you would need if you were controlling the main rudder itself. 
The trim tab was constructed with a bronze rod going through it and Port Townsend Foundry, who cast our main pintles and gudgeons for the main rudder, also cast some smaller gudgeons uh, to hold the trim tab onto the trailing edge of the rudder. So Zeal's job is to fit those to the rudder and then mount the trim tab. Uh, so you might have noticed that the the installation for the gudgeons of the trim tab are different than that of the rudder. Uh, we opted to use machine screws to install the gudgeons for the trim tab onto the rudder. Uh, the key reasons for that being that you can't lift the trim tab up off of the rudder in the same fashion that you could lift the rudder up off of the boat. It's captured vertically by the gudgeons. Uh, and if we did install them in the same way which we could have uh, by using hot riveting, it would make it a lot harder to remove the trim tab if any damage were to occur. So uh, each of those gudgeons were drilled and tapped to receive a Zerk fitting, which uh, upon a haul out, you'll be able to put a Zerk fitting in there. But while the boat is in the water, it will just have a small uh, Allen head set screw to replace the Zerk fitting to keep things from growing in there and to keep the hole from fouling up. Uh, and that way, if you ever did want to grease it, you just take the set screw out and you put a Zerk fitting in there and then pump grease in there. That way the, the Zerk fittings don't get caked with paint under the water line and they just don't get fouled up and won't look uh, unsightly on the side of a very, you know, nice looking bronze gudgeon. So trim tabs and self-steering mechanisms can be mounted to the back of a boat or the back of a rudder in various different ways, but very often they involve fairly complex and bulky brackets. Now there is sometimes a good reason for that. There is an advantage to getting the trim tab further aft because it has more leverage and power that way, but I wanted to design a rudder and trim tab system that looked 
like it was part of the boat and not something that was added on later. And there are other advantages to keeping it low profile and compact, such as better hydrodynamics. So the trim tab is controlled by the rod or the shaft, which continues up out of the water. And rather than going through a bracket near the top of the rudder stock, which would be more common, I designed it to actually go through the rudder stock itself. So Zeal's next job is to drill or bore a hole almost vertically through the rudder stock for the trim tab shaft to pass through. Boring the hole for the trim tab drive shaft, I first created two, two bearing points to drill the initial hole, uh, just pretty roughly. And then I was able to make, uh, instead of two bearing points on one side of the hole, I used a bearing point on either side of the hole after the initial one had been drilled. Uh, and slowly went up in size from a uh, counterbore to using a boring bar to get the final uh, diameter of the hole. And that final diameter of the hole is to accommodate a tube that we glued in with epoxy. Uh, the tube is of G10, so it's a composite fiberglass tube. We won't need to paint it and protect it as much as you would if it was just a wooden, you know, exposed wood in the hole. Uh, and it also enabled us to put a bearing in one end of that. Uh, so before we installed that G10 tube, Dylan took it on his lathe and he, he milled a recess in one end of it to accommodate slipping a Delrin bearing into that. So that trim tab shaft will go all the way from the trim tab all the way up through that hole, through the G10, slide through that upper bearing, just a single top bearing, and up to the, through the top of the rudder head. So the rudder is looking amazing, Zeal has been doing a really great job with it. Now as many of you will know we held an open house, open workshop event here last weekend. Uh, it was the second time we've done it and a lot of people came through. It was pretty amazing. I think we had uh, maybe two and a half thousand people come through the workshop and walk on the deck of the boat. It was a really pretty intense experience for me and the rest of the crew, um, meeting so many people, seeing so many people, but some really, really sweet moments, really lovely stories, uh, people telling us uh, what the videos mean to them and all sorts of things like that. Raoul and Darlene, my hosts from when the boat was in Squim were here as well with Poncho, the parrot, uh, and it was a, just a pretty special day. So big thanks to everyone who came along. Now to get ready for the open house, we had to do quite a bit of preparation. A lot of that was just to make the boat look good, um, put the jewelry on, the shiny bronze things, put the hatch on, uh, and we also hung the rudder and the trim tab so people could see it. 
a lot of this stuff like the winch bases and the sheet horse and the hatch uh, were just sort of placed in position they're not actually finished they're not fastened but we just wanted to make the boat look as good as possible now you'll see in a moment after the rudder is hung the skylight hatch or the butterfly hatch being forklifted up onto the deck of the boat. Pat Mahan has been working really hard on this beautiful piece of teak deck furniture and although it hasn't got the glass in it yet it is very close to being finished so we decided to get it out of the workshop and get it on the boat and it was really really special to see it in place. Well, as you hopefully saw from the little bit of footage we got, it was a really special day and really great to meet so many people and so many patrons. You may have noticed in the background some little parts of the boat that haven't been in videos yet. We're sitting on a little bit of footage here which we're trying to edit and work through so you'll be seeing those jobs and seeing those pieces in more detail very soon. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference and it means that we're able to keep on doing this work and we're able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.